Nuclear explosions are caused by weapons such as H-bombs or atom bombs. They are like ordinary explosions, only many times more powerful. They cause great heat and blast. They also make a cloud of deadly dust which falls slowly to the ground. This is what is called fallout. So these are the two dangers. First, heat and blast, which is followed by fallout. The heat and blast is so severe that it can kill and can destroy buildings for up to five miles from the explosion. Fallout is dust that is sucked up from the ground by the explosion. It can be deadly dangerous. It rises high in the air and can be carried by winds for hundreds of miles before falling to the ground. You can protect yourself and your family. And later on, we will show you what steps to take. If we are attacked by nuclear weapons, these are the warning sounds you must recognize. First, the attack warning. If an attack is expected, the sirens will sound a rising and falling note like this. Next, the fallout warning. When fallout is expected, you will hear three bangs in short succession. They will be sounded by means of maroons like this. Or you may hear three gongs like this. Or three whistles, like this. These all mean that fallout is expected. Warnings of the attack and of fallout will also be broadcast. When the immediate danger of air attack or fallout has passed, the siren will sound a steady note, like this. Here are the warning sounds again. Attack. Fallout. Here is a reminder of what the air attack warning sounds like. This is the sound.
When you hear the attack warning, you and your family must take cover at once. Do not stay out of doors. If you are caught in the open, lie down. And now here is a reminder about fallout warnings. When fallout is expected, you will hear three bangs in short succession, like this. In some areas, the warning may be given by means of three gongs, like this. Or you may hear three whistles, like this. All these three types of sounds indicate that fallout is expected. When you hear them, you must stay in the safest position in the house. Keep the door shut. Do not go outside the house until you are told it is safe. Here is the all clear warning. When you hear this sound, you can leave your cover but keep listening for further warnings. <laughs> the most widespread danger from nuclear explosions is fallout. Fallout is dust that is sucked up from the ground by the explosion. Fallout can kill. Since it can be carried for great distances by the winds, it can eventually settle anywhere. So no place in the United Kingdom is safer than any other. The risk is as great in the countryside as in the towns. Nobody can tell where the safest place will be. So you are just as safe in your own home area as anywhere else. In fact, you are far better off at home because it is the place you know and where you are known. So, stay where you are. If you leave your home, your local authority may take it over for homeless families. And if you move, the authorities in the new place will not help you with food, accommodation, or other essentials. You are better off in your own home. Stay there. <laughs> You must now choose a room in your home which will give the best protection from fallout. If you live in a house, the safest place is the ground floor or basement. Choose a room with the smallest amount of outside wall. The farther you are from outside walls and the roof, the better the protection. If you live in a block of flats, which is more than five floors high, it is important not to use the top two floors. The safest places are inside passages away from outside walls and windows. If the block is four floors or less, the best place for a fallout room is the basement or ground floor. If you live too high up to be safe, you must make arrangements now with your neighbors in the lower floors, or make some suitable arrangements to shelter with someone close by. If you live in a one-story house, like a bungalow or prefab, 
the building itself will not give you much protection. So the best thing is to make arrangements now to shelter with someone close by. If this is not possible, look for a space in your home which is farthest from the roof and the outside walls. Later, we shall be telling you how to strengthen and improve your fallout room. We have told you how to choose a fallout room in your home. The best place is farthest away from the roof and outside walls. Your fallout room will protect you, but you will make it even safer by strengthening a small part of it. This part will be your inner refuge during the worst of the attack. Making a refuge is not difficult. The main things you will need are shovel, boxes, cartons or large plastic bags, earth or sand. Start collecting them now. These things may also come in handy. Hammer, saw, screwdriver, nails, screws, string or thin rope, scissors or penknife. One idea is to make a lean-to of wood resting against an inside wall. Strong boards or doors taken from their hinges are quite good. Stop them slipping down the wall by fixing them to the floor with a strip of wood, like this. Then cover the wood with bags or boxes filled with some heavy material, like sand, earth, books, or rolled up clothes. Don't forget to fix the bags and boxes so that they don't slip off. Across the two open ends of your refuge, you should make thick walls of bags and boxes of earth or sand, or heavy furniture packed tightly with heavy material. Don't forget to leave an easy way into and out of your refuge. Next, a cupboard under the stairs. That is another good place for a refuge. Put boxes of earth or sand on the stairs and along the walls of the cupboard, like this. If the stairs are on an outside wall, make the wall thicker with bags of earth or sand. Stack the bags up to a height of about six feet. Here is another idea. Use tables, if they are strong and large enough for you and your family to shelter beneath. Make solid sides around the tables out of heavy furniture, boxes filled with sand, earth or books. If you can, lay strong boards or doors across the top and cover them with bags of heavy material. This will make a good roof over your refuge. If you live in a caravan or other building of lightweight construction which provides you with very little protection against fallout, your local authority will be able to advise you on what to do. Whatever type of refuge you have, the main thing to remember is that the more heavy material you have around you, like earth or sand, the more chance there is of saving your life. Start looking now for materials for your fallout room and inner refuge. 
Here is a list of things and some ideas for using them. Bricks, concrete blocks, bags or boxes filled with earth or sand. If you cannot get hold of sandbags or boxes, try travel bags, haversacks, suitcases, pillowcases, or anything which will hold sand or earth. Strong pieces of wood, heavy furniture, doors taken off their hinges. All these things can give you good protection. Think about them and make plans now. Decide what you already have in your home that will be suitable for making a refuge. Decide what you may need to bring into the house, earth, bricks, sand, etc., to strengthen it. Decide where you will store all these materials so that you will know exactly where they are when you need them. You can use these materials like this for thickening the floor above your fallout room, for building your inner refuge, for blocking windows, doors, halls or passages, for thickening outside walls. All these materials can save your life. Start sorting them out now. <laughs> If you have taken the advice we've been giving you recently, you will by now have chosen your fallout room and gathered your materials for an inner refuge. The time has now come to make everything ready for you and your family in case an air attack happens. This does not mean that war is bound to come, but there is a risk of this and we must all be prepared for it. So don't waste time, start now. To help you, we will remind you once again about choosing a fallout room and an inner refuge. First, choosing a fallout room. That should be a room in your house which will give you the best possible protection from fallout. A room that is farthest from the outside walls and the roof, or one with the smallest amount of outside wall is safest. Whatever room you choose, remember that the further you can get away from radioactive dust in or around your home, the safer you will be. So in a house, the safest place is the ground floor or basement. In a block of flats, do not shelter in the top two floors if the block is five floors high or more. Go to the lower floors, ground floor or basement. The central corridors will give good protection. If you live in a bungalow or similar one-story home, it will not give you much protection. If you cannot make alternative arrangements, choose the safest place, which is a space farthest from the roof and outside walls. And now a reminder about your inner refuge. We have told you that your fallout room should be the safest place in your home. Even this is sometimes not safe enough, however, particularly for the first two days and nights after an attack, when the danger from radiation could be critical. So you need, inside your fallout room, an inner refuge, a fortified area to give you greater protection during the worst of the attack. The inner refuge should be thickly lined with dense materials to resist radiation away from outside walls if possible. Now for its construction. Make a lean-to with wood resting against an inside wall. Use boards or doors taken from their hinges. Stop them slipping down the wall by nailing a strip of wood to the floor like this. Cover them with dense material and fix some rope around it so that it won't slip. Partly close the open ends, leaving an easy way in and out of your refuge like this. 
Another good place for a refuge is a cupboard under the stairs. Reinforce the stairs and the side like this. If the stairs are on an outside wall, stack up containers of earth or sand to make the wall thicker to resist radiation. If you've got tables large enough to give you and your family sufficient shelter, use them. Make the sides solid with heavy furniture or boxes of books or sand. Reinforce the top with strong boards or doors and cover them with dense materials. More details are given in the booklet, Protect and Survive. If you haven't got one yet, get one from the post office now. And start right away making your home and your family as safe as possible from nuclear attack. Start now on your fallout room and in a refuge. Thicken the floor above your fallout room. Start blocking windows, doors, halls, passages. Thicken the outside wall if your fallout room is against it. All these things can save your life. Start now. Fallout dust gives off dangerous radiation. It cannot be seen or felt. It has no smell. Anybody staying within reach of fallout for too long can fall ill or die. So you must keep away from fallout until it is safe. And this may mean staying in your fallout room for up to 14 days. Prepare yourself for this now by storing all the things you need. Put them in your fallout room or stacked up within easy reach close by. Here is a list of the most important things you will need. Drinking water. Food, mostly in tins. Portable radio and spare batteries. Tin opener, bottle opener, some cutlery and crockery. Warm clothing. And now here is a list of some things which will make living in your fallout room much more comfortable. Bedding, sleeping bags. Portable stove and fuel. Saucepans for boiling water and cooking. Torches with spare bulbs and batteries. Candles, matches table and chairs, toilet articles, soap, toilet rolls, change of clothing, first aid kit, household medicines and prescribed medicines, box of dry sand, cloths or tissues for wiping plates and utensils, Notebook and pencil for messages. Brushes, shovel and cleaning materials, rubber or plastic gloves. Toys for children, books and magazines to pass the time. Clock and calendar. Finally, don't forget your booklet, Protect and Survive. It tells you how to make your home and family as safe as possible. All the items we've just told you about are listed in it. A warning may come quite unexpectedly. We will now tell you what to do if a warning sounds when you are at home. 
and then we will explain what to do if you are out of doors. First, if you are at home. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. So take cover at once. Send your young children to the fallout room, then go quickly and turn off the gas and the electricity at the mains. Close down stoves. Damp down fires. Shut windows. And draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. You should now move yourself and your family to the safest area in your fallout room. That is, you should get inside your inner refuge and stay there. After two days, the danger from fallout will get less, but don't take any risks by contact with it. The longer you stay in your refuge, the better it will be for you. Listen to your radio. Stay where you are and keep listening to your radio. Now, this is what you should do if you are out of doors when the warning sounds. Take cover at once when you hear the attack sound. If you cannot reach home in 10 minutes, Take cover in the nearest building. If there is no building nearby, try to find some solid cover. If there is no solid cover, lie flat in a ditch or a hole and cover your head, face and hands as fast as you can with some of your clothes. If you hear the fallout warning, Seek the nearest and best cover as quickly as you can. But before entering the building or cover, brush or shake off any fallout dust you may have picked up and get rid of it. Change your outer clothing if you can. Stay under cover. When the all clear sounds, like this, It means that you are safe from attack or fallout for the time being and that you can go out again. But keep listening for further warnings or to your radio for further advice. After an attack, you may have to stay in your home for about 14 days. So make sure to store plenty of water and food for your family. Water is more essential to life than food. You can live for a long time with a little food if you have enough water or liquids to drink. How much is enough? Well, each person should drink about two pints a day. So, for 14 days, three and a half gallons is enough for one person. But you should double this amount if you can, 
then there will be some to spare for washing your face and hands. Keep drinking water in your fallout room. Store it in plastic containers with a screw top or in bottles or jars covered to keep out dirt. Store the rest in kettles and saucepans and in basins in the bathtub. Try to keep some tins of fruit juice as well. Now food. Stock enough for everybody for 14 days. You may not be able to cook anything hot, so buy foods you can eat cold and that will not go bad. Buy food well wrapped or in tins. And by the way, don't forget your tin opener and bottle opener. You will do best to buy lots of different kinds of foods if you can, so that you won't get bored with too much of the same thing. Stock up with meats, vegetables, fruit, tinned or powdered milk, and special foods for babies or invalids. You will also need some sweet things, like sugar or jam, and biscuits. Keep the food in a cool, dry place until you have to take it to your fallout room. Foods that will go bad quickly should be the first to be eaten. Try to ration everything so that it will last out. After a nuclear attack, you may not be able to use your lavatory because there might not be enough water to flush it or the whole system might be damaged. So start collecting now items which will help you prepare your emergency toilet arrangements. Keep them in your fallout room. First, buckets or containers, preferably with lids or covers. If you line them with large plastic bags, it will make it easier to empty them. Try to rig up some kind of seat across the top of the bucket or container. And don't forget, plenty of strong disinfectant and toilet paper. All of those items should be kept in your fallout room. You will also need a dustbin with a well-fitting lid for the plastic bags when they get full, having first tied the neck of the bags. Keep the dustbin just outside your fallout room and get another separate bin for food scraps and other rubbish. A nuclear explosion produces intense heat. This can get through unprotected windows and set fire to things in your home. But there are steps you can take now to cut down the risk. First, whiten your windows with white paint to reflect some of the heat away. This will cut down the risk of these fires. Then get rid of junk lying about in your attics and upper floors, especially old papers and magazines which can catch fire easily. The heat from the bomb strikes at attics and upper floors most easily, and fires there are usually the hardest to put out, so pay particular attention to these places. In other parts of the building, clear away papers and magazines, then net curtains from windows, and any old rubbish inside or outside your home which is likely to catch fire easily. Small fires can be put out easily if they are tackled at once. If they are left, they spread fast and soon get out of control. The fire brigade may not be able to reach you 
and you will have to protect yourself without any help. So prepare now. If you have a fire extinguisher, keep it handy. Or a garden hose could be very useful. Keep buckets of sand and water ready on each floor. When you take cover in your inner refuge, you must not go outside until it is absolutely safe. And if the fallout is heavy, you may be in your refuge for quite a long time. Although the danger from fallout will get less and less as time goes by, you will never be able to judge for yourself how bad it is. Advice will be given to you on the radio, so keep listening. This advice over the radio and other instructions and news will be very important to you while you're cut off from the people living around you. So make sure your radio is in good working order. And if you have a spare radio, keep it in your fallout room. Radios must be battery operated because your electricity may be cut off. So be sure to get some spare batteries. After a fallout warning, you have been advised to take cover in your inner refuge. The first two days will be the most dangerous period because fallout will be at its worst. So it is in your best interest to stay in your inner refuge the whole of that time, however cramped or uncomfortable it may be. But if you must leave the refuge to go to the lavatory or to get more water or food, don't stay out a second longer than is necessary. In any case, don't go outside the fallout room at all. After two days, the danger from fallout will be less, but it may still kill you. So the longer you stay in your inner refuge, the better your chances are. Although it may be fairly safe for you to move about inside your fallout room, it certainly will not be safe for you to go outside the house until the radio tells you. So keep listening to your radio for advice. At first, you'll be told when you can go outside the house for a short time to get rid of lavatory waste and rubbish. Then, as the danger from fallout begins to pass away, you will be able to stay out for longer spells. There may still be a lot of fallout dust lying about, so be careful not to bring it back with you into the house. Keep a separate pair of boots or strong shoes for going out. Before coming in, take them off and wash or wipe them, soles as well. It is also a good idea to wear rubber gloves while you are outside. Try to keep the younger people indoors as much as possible. In fact, it will be far wiser for only people over 30 to work outside until things get better. And now, a reminder of some of the things we have told you in earlier films. Fallout can kill, though you cannot see it, feel it, or smell it. There is danger outside, so don't go outside. Stay in your fallout room until you are told it is safe to come out. <laughs> Thank you. 
After an attack, fires will start in many places. The fire brigade may not be able to help everyone. So it might be up to us to tackle the fires in our own homes. Here is some advice on how to do it. Make sure that you have turned off gas and electricity at the mains. Don't smoke. Then start checking for fires. Start at the top of the house. Check roof space and every room. Putting out fires before they get out of control. Small fires can be put out quite easily if they're tackled at once. If they are left, they spread quickly and take hold. Use water from the tap if there is any. Earth and sand are also useful. Put all the members of your family to work putting out fires in the house. When you are satisfied that the inside is safe, check the outside of the house and make sure that you are safe from any fires which have started nearby. When you have seen to your own household, help any neighbour in need. If you have used any of your precious drinking water to fight fires, make good your reserves. Fill up all your containers again and put covers on them. Turn off your water supply at the mains. It may become contaminated. If your house is damaged, you may have a little time before a fallout warning to carry out minor jobs to keep the weather out. Curtains or sheets may be used to cover broken windows or holes. Then listen for the fallout warning. If it comes, take cover in your inner refuge and stay there. Earlier we told you what to do to prepare emergency lavatory arrangements in or near your fallout room. It will not be easy for you to keep clean in shelter conditions, mainly because it is unlikely that there will be any water to spare for washing or for flushing the lavatory. But cleanliness is essential to prevent sickness. And here are a few simple rules to help you. All toilet containers should be covered when they're not in use. Pour in some disinfectant. It will cut down the smells and keep off flies. When you have used the bucket lavatory, wipe your hands with toilet paper soaked in a little mild disinfectant. Throw the paper into the container and put the lid on. Keep an eye on small children and see that they do the same as you to keep clean. Don't let the bucket get too full. If you have lined it with a plastic bag, tie the neck tight before lifting it out and put it in a separate dustbin well away from the fallout room. Put a fresh plastic bag into the bucket with a few drops of disinfectant. Cover the bucket with a lid. When it is safe to do so, take the dustbin and its contents outside the house. Remove the waste and bring the empty bin back. Food scraps, empty tins and other rubbish should be wrapped up tightly in newspapers and put in a separate dustbin. Keep the lid on. If you have got only one dustbin, use that for toilet waste only. Put all other rubbish separate in plastic bags or paper until you can take it outside the house. Keep your hands as clean as possible. Wear rubber gloves for dirty work. Try to avoid touching food with your hands as much as possible. Keep your knives and forks, plates and cups, etc. clean. Dry, clean sand is quite good for this.
After an air attack, your water taps may run dry, or the water in them may be too dangerous to drink because it has been poisoned by fallout. So your life may depend entirely on what you have stored. Keep it clean by covering the containers. Its main use is for drinking, but use it sparingly. For each person, you should have stored at least two pints for each day. Don't waste water on washing or anything else. If you must use water for cooking, use as little as possible. If you heat cans of food in a saucepan of water, don't throw the water away. It can be used over and over again. By the way, make sure you pierce the top of the can before heating. Dip your dirty knives and forks into the pan while the water is still hot. Water is life. Save it. You should by now have built up an emergency reserve of tin food or other foods that don't go off quickly and that can be eaten cold. Keep your food reserves in your fallout room and remember to keep them well covered to protect them from fallout dust. There might be fallout dust on the packaging. Take care this does not get into the food. So wipe the tins packets and bottles. You may not be able to replace your stocks of food for a long time, so make them last. Most of the time, you'll be resting in your fallout room and you won't need to consume much food. Eat the smallest amount you can get by with and plan meals carefully so that there is no waste. And remember, keep your food covered from fallout. Wrap open tins and loose foods. Prepare small amounts at a time. You may not be able to replace your stocks for a long time, so ration food carefully. <laughs> After an attack is over and the all clear has been sounded, arrangements will be made as soon as possible to treat any people who are ill or injured. Listen to your radio. Details will be given about what to do, when to do it, and how. If anyone dies while you are kept in your fallout room, move the body to another room in the house. Label the body with name and address and cover it as tightly as possible in polythene, paper, sheets or blankets. Tie a second card to the covering. The radio will advise you what to do about taking the body away for burial. If, however, you have had a body in the house for more than five days and if it is safe to go outside, then you should bury the body for the time being in a trench or cover it with earth and mark the spot of the burial. 